Hey folks, and welcome to Drinking Alone with Friends, a podcast where three friends drink alone together. My name's Chris. What up, stud? And I'm Obert. I mean, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You sound, Obert, Obert, you I sound mean, a little Dan. different. I do. I sound a lot different. Because I'm not over. I feel like you grew a couple inches and moved back to Connecticut. A couple your inches? Name. It's like a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Give or take. Yeah. Obert was uh, lame having all these friends visit because he has a social life. So uh, so we had to get the, the we had to upgrade the podcast a little bit this week and we got, we got Dan right. to join us. So Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys, for having me. Well, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for joining along on this wild, crazy ride that we take part in every week. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild and crazy. It's wild and crazy in a ride, yeah. So, uh, I mean, let's get right into it. We haven't talked to Dan since episode 48, which was for Tud's wedding. So, Dan, what what have you been up to? Anything fun and exciting? Oh, man. Last... Yeah. So, you know, about a week or two after your wedding, Tud, um, Tina and I actually took our first staycation where we took a week off and did went nowhere and did nothing um that's fun no we actually we had just five years of of just stuff to catch up on house chores we still had totes of stuff from the wedding um if you guys remember our our wedding favors were bottle openers of different shapes and stuff like that i still have one somewhere yeah, we found a bag of like 25 of them. So if you want another <laughs> one of those, we have a bunch left. Um, so yeah, it was, it was kind of good. We, we had a big list of house chores to do, little projects, um, cleaning stuff out, donated a lot of stuff. Um, just that, that stuff that week to week you just don't have any time for. And, um, you know, tried to go out at night and, uh, have fun, but at the same time be productive. And, uh, we had a good week. It was a lot of fun. Nice. That's cool. So did you That's always the, fun. Did you paint the town red or beige? Were you out late or did you, did you go home early <laughs> like old people? <laughs> yeah, no painting the town beige or red. We did, you know, try to, you know, work hard during the day, have fun at night. But I did paint the foundation gray, if that counts. That was one of the... <laughs> what, was, what, is that? what does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it, it means my ugly foundation is now painted gray because Wait, that like was you... one of the biggest eyesores as you drive up to the house. The foundation is just gray and ugly and just, I don't know. It looks so, quite nice now. So hang on a second. Me, me and the wife went out and, uh, you know, we got a little wild. We painted the, <laughs> we painted the foundation gray. <laughs> so the two things. A, yes. <laughs> I love how I said two things and then started with A, not one. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second thing, you the foundation. This is A house. and number two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, A and number two. Oh. So you painted the foundation of your house gray. So yes. you painted concrete that's yes. already gray, gray. <laughs> to be fair, it's a much more consistent gray. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, I'll blame, I'm going to blame Lowe's on this one, but it actually worked out. The paint, there's basically like, I don't know, three options for concrete paint at Lowe's unless you want to get it tinted, like light gray, dark gray, and then like a blue color. And I picked dark gray, but it's actually more like a dark blue and it somehow matches our shutters perfectly, which was a complete accident. Which shape Um, did you paint your concrete? Gray or gray? Or gray. (laughs) But I didn't care. It just looks better now that it's painted. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. It's always fun. You know, when we sold the Connecticut house, um, the buyers actually had to have us paint the foundation. So that was a real huge pain in the ass. <laughs> so It really is. Yeah. Well, I, luckily, I paid someone else to do it. So, <laughs> But it was a big, big, huge pain in the ass. But I'm not going to lie. That is quite honestly the strangest thing i could imagine a buyer of a house requiring the seller to do yeah i it was part of this whole thing i don't know but please was, paint it, the foundation it's pretty weird <laughs> yeah it yeah, don't ever sell the house if you buy a house don't sell it just it, burn it down burn it down it, collect the insurance money <laughs> <laughs> you can take that to the bank or, like that's, or, or just buy advice. a house and 
replace the whole water system. You could do that too. I feel like if we knew like a financial advisor, they may tell us not to do that. I I don't know any of them. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But I think everybody, including myself, well, maybe not Tud. Tud's fallen asleep, but maybe everybody is so uh, tired. Is ready for ready for to highlight some drinks on this podcast. So, who wants to kick us off this week? I will go first. Let's do it, Todd. All right. This week, I was really lazy. I went in my fridge. I chose the first beer that popped up. So, I am drinking a Nodic by Fox Farm. Yeah, I've never seen. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, it's new. I think. Um, I bought it on Thursday, so it's new to me. <laughs> um, it is an American Pale Ale. It's five point two percent ABV. And that's all I know about it right now. So we're going to find out what it tastes like. So you didn't try this on site? Nope. Oh, okay. So this is a first first reaction. This is a blind tasting. Interesting. I'm a, my Tud Cleo says you're going to like it. I, I, feel like, I feel like that's probably <laughs> probably not a stretch. Right. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of this Fox Farm, but pretty excited hmm. for it. That is a, it's a little bit maltier than I was expecting. All right, so it definitely has some uh, a little bit of fruit flavors to it. I'd say a little bit okay. more um, like really, really ripe orange um, with a mm-hmm. really healthy malt backbone to it. Uh, with maybe a little bit of pineapple, too, on the backside. Hang on, I gotta taste it, yeah. <laughs> I really want to know, I mean, we've been down the road. Tud has an awesome beer palette, but ripe right. orange, not ripe orange. Yeah, so There's a difference <laughs> there. there so in think beer. about uh, yeah. So I, by ripe orange, by really really ripe orange, I was more going with like it's like more of like a duller flavor, a duller orange flavor. It's not as like bitey as like a normal orange. Like you know what I mean. Like it's not as sour mm. as a normal citrus orange would be. So this is a little bit more duller on the back end. A little bit more towards you know really really ripe pineapple and really really ripe orange versus fresh. Um, no star fruit as uh you know as hashtag star fruit update. No star fruit <laughs> in this one. <laughs> I was at Stop and Shop earlier and looked for star fruit because I wanted to have it for this, but they didn't have any. Oh, I will on, say Stop that Shop. there might be a little bit of stone fruit, which is <laughs> if anybody's had stone fruit, it kind of tastes like kind of tastes citrusy, like but it's sand. it's good. Um, overall, I'd give this probably a three seven five. It's not Fox Farm's best beer. But it is a solid drinking beer. It's a little bit more maltier than I was expecting. I was expecting something a little bit more crisp and clean, but it's good. Overall, I'm happy with this. So, nice. if you had to guess what the untapped universe thinks of this beer, what do you think it is? 4.07. Whoa, did you look it up? No. 4.06. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty close. Damn. All right. So close. Yeah, out of... Uh... Three only three hundred and eighteen check ins, so it must be newer, I guess. Yeah, I think it's wow. a new I think it's like came out this week style beer. Nice. That's awesome. Um yeah, I mean obviously we I mean I don't think we can say enough about Fox Farm. I wear their shirts about two times a week, so <laughs> Yeah, they're they're fantastic. Um I went there on Thursday to try their newest sour, which is the first one that they brewed in their cool ship. Uh it's called Persimmon. Oh, nice. And that was delicious. They uh they cross brewed it with Tilted Barn out of Rhode Island. So uh, I was talking with them, and even though it's the first beer out of their cool ship, it wasn't spon- it didn't this beer didn't spontaneously ferment in the building. Um, unfortunately, they had to pitch yeast in order to get it to ferment. So they were a little upset with that. But it is officially the first beer that's ever touched the the steel of the cool ship. Oh, very cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember when we went before your wedding when we were all in town. We were talking about this cool ship thing and this idea. So that's all fleshed out, and they're making beer there now. They are. Um, you know, it has to be the exact right temperature and air quality in order to spontaneously ferment beer there. So they can only use it for a short amount of time during the year because you can't use it during the summer. You can't use it during the winter. Obviously, it's really like early fall and late spring that they can use this thing, and that's it. Yeah, it's really that. Really, is just like a crazy cool concept and. If you need to know what a cool ship is, you better re-listen to our backlog. <laughs> we talk about it a handful of times. So yes, yeah, it's really cool. It's like the the brewmasters intentionally making it harder on themselves, but in the process, is going to come out with something brand new. Right. Yeah. And you know, and not every batch is the same. You could do the same exact thing two times in a row, and it's not going to be the same beer, which is 
yeah. phenomenal. It's awesome. Yeah, because that yeast is growing in the building at that point, which is pretty cool. That's so strange. <laughs> so um, I'm going to hand this off to Dan. Dan, as the guest, what are you drinking? Awesome. Well, so I am actually drinking a beer that I have been waiting to drink for some occasion that I found appropriate, and I think now is a good occasion for it. Um, it is actually a bomber, so it might take me a second to open this because there's a cork in it. It's a Samuel mm. Adams Cosmic Mother Funk Grand Cru. Ooh, a lot of good carbonation left in that. Uh, 2015 limited release. Huh. So, uh, quick backstory. Tina and I, on our first anniversary, took a trip to Boston. And I'm a I'm a pretty big Sam Adams fan. I enjoy a lot of their beers. And we did the brewery tour and everything. And this Favorite was one president. of <clears throat> Of course. This was one of their limited release beers. It seemed pretty cool. They only made a couple um batches of it. So I bought this bomber and it says right on the back, I'll, I'll read the paragraph, but it does say, um, enjoy this now or age it to further develop unique flavors. So I just kind of like threw it in the fridge and forgot about it. And now we just celebrated our fifth anniversary. So four years later, I'm I'm imagining there's some uh, unique flavors in this beer. Um, nice. It's a six and a half percent ABV, and it is a Belgian style air ale um, aged in Hungarian oak turns. Ooh, tons or tons? It says tons. Yeah, I believe I'm that's not sure right. What that is? Yeah, is Hungarian it? oak tons for T-O-N-N-E-S. over a year. Yes. T U N S. Oh, I think it's a barrel of some kind yeah hungarian oak tons um over a year and fermented with multiple microorganisms two of which i can't pronounce and other wild critters found in the environment of our brewery oh so it's spontaneously fermented too oh yeah maybe Uh, so it says this complex ale is wild tart and funky with a depth of flavors ranging from earthy and spicy to floral and sweet so let's give this thing a shot yeah, that's that's one of those beers that's just gonna be that's gonna be funky. It's gonna be it might it might be cosmic mother funk. You never know. I, I, would, I would imagine that he's gonna taste a lot of prunes. <laughs> wow, I'm not gonna lie. Just, I really kind of wish Tud was here with me right now to taste this because there is a lot going on here. There's a lot of prunes. It's all prunes. <laughs> wow, it's it's actually really good. The carbonation, like I'm looking down in the glass and I can like see this. This just mass of bubbles coming up, so I'm actually quite impressed that there's mm. hasn't lost any carbonation at all. I kind of like when you when you drink champagne, it has that unique carbonation feeling. So it kind of has that right as you put it in your mouth. Um, well, are you drinking that from a official Sam Adams glass? I of course am. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might have something to do with that carbonation being released too. That's true, because it has the signature etched bottom. Yep. I I love how out of all the things that Dan could describe this beer as, he said it's like drinking champagne. Yeah. Well, (laughs) well, no, so so I'm I'm starting with like, okay, what hits you first is that the carbonation feels like champagne. Um, It definitely has a sour... Like more John, more Tina, more Dan, more Logan. (laughs) Yes. Stupid. (laughs) Um... Yeah, I man, this is really hard. I I kind of feel bad because my palate's not developed so like yours is, Tud. But it is tart and funky. I mean, there's so many mm. different flavors going on here. It, it looks really, really dark. Yeah, like, it's it's very dark. Crazy that's why I was going with plum yeah. or prune. Yeah, you it's very plum. dark. It's not opaque, but um, it's yeah. um, it's actually very good. Um, that's it's good. it's it's pretty sour, but um, is it lighter than it looks? It's definitely a lighter drinking for sure. Well, yeah, I, like, you, you like honestly, only... yeah, six and a half percent. Right. Um, not much head to it. It's I pretty light drinking, said. but um, yeah, man, I, I I like that. I think I would give that like a probably like a four two five, um, which I wow. honestly wasn't expecting. I I I usually don't expect to like these like funky sour beer beers, but um, right. This one's pretty good, and and quite honestly, like funky is the right word. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm getting like. I'm getting like a maybe like a little cherry. Would we say like gym socks funky or like? No, it's like... confusing funky. I'm like there's mm. there's fruits. I I'm not gonna say any specific fruits. I'm just gonna say there are fruits in there. <laughs> <laughs> we know what happens last time we called out specific <laughs> fruits on this podcast. <laughs> there are a lot of notes of a lot of different fruits. 
past that funkiness. Funkiness. <laughs> but this is good. I'm really glad I finally decided to open this. And awesome. because it's a champagne style cork, I cannot recork it. So it must be consumed. <laughs> it must be gone. It nice. must be gone. Must or be else gone. I'm sure awesome. it will go bad. Um, so yeah, I'm yeah. going to say 425 on this one. Awesome. And um, check that check that into untapped and take a look about 2200 check-ins and untapped community says 3.97 mm. huh. so kind that's of actually right in the ballpark yeah that's actually pretty good normally when you get those funky those funky kind of beers that are especially that are tart and especially a belgian style that they generally don't fare that well on untapped so that's pretty good so now i see what you were saying about the plum thing Todd, because i didn't think about the belgian yeah that's that's where i was going with that yeah plums dates at first yeah that makes Prune. sense. But as a sour, that's kind of that's got to be interesting. But yeah, then again, I'm not there to taste it, so I can't tell you what type of fruit Dan is tasting. <laughs> yeah, and I I did a little bit of research on this Cosmic Mother Funk line, and it's it's kind of like their experimental beers. Um, it says that you know one of our favorite places to experiment is the Barrel Room in our Boston brewery. It is here that each of our Sam Adams Barrel Room collections is born. Cosmic Mother Funk is at the heart of the soul of these beers, and it's blended in varying degrees into each brew. So this one, specifically the Grand Cru, is a, um, a Belgian-style ale, but there's there's a bunch of different ones. And they actually just released this year their first one outside of the brewery. So these were all exclusive to just buying in the brewery, but now there's one that has been released that you can buy on the shelf. Oh, nice. Cool. That's cool. I have Very never awesome. been to the Sam Adams Brewery. Fun fact. I was about to ask. I was about to ask. I mean, clearly Dan has. Um, Chris, have you been? Yeah, I, I went, uh, oh, man, probably six or six or seven years ago, maybe five or six years ago. I don't know. It, it's it's a pretty cool tour. It's uh, pretty pretty neat, and you get the little glasses, I think. I can't remember, but it was, it yep. was, it was a cool tour. Um, not the best tour I've ever been on, but... It was it was very good. Interesting. I'll have to check it out one day. Yeah, for sure. Well, you you, you go to Boston. I mean, semi regularly. I'm I won't say regularly, but it's 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 worth stopping in. Uh, yeah, for sure. But, and there's a nice little. At least the day we went, there was a cool little like farmers market slash craft market like right outside. So there was a lot of vendors and just cool little Bostony things to see. Um, oh, nice. For a brewery tour, it was great. We did um, uh, UFO, not harpoon. Harpoon, the same day also, and and Harpoon was really good. Now, Harpoon is a fun brewery to go tour. Yes, and you must get the pretzel bites. I don't know if I've ever <laughs> had those. Best pretzel bites in the world, Harpoon Brewery in Boston. I've only been to the Harpoon. Well, no, that's not true. I've been to the Harpoon in Boston, but I've only taken the tour up in Vermont. Mm. I have Fortnite. heard that that's a good tour also. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So Interesting. I don't think I've, I've never been to the one in Vermont. Um, only better than the one in Boston. Mm. Do they still do the all you can drink after the tour for like five bucks. Is that still thrown I mean, in there? I mean, they did it last time I was there, which was a few years ago. Which yeah, this was cool. like five years ago for me. I don't remember. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying my beer over here. Uh, Chris, what are you drinking tonight? All right, so I actually have a very special beer that I wanted to share with the podcast. Um, cool. Often, often I refer to this as like my white whale of beers. Uh, that I was able to get through a beer trade, and I'm very, very excited about it. So, I am drinking. Ooh, dinner what? by Ooh. Main Beer Company. So, what are you drinking though? Dinner. Dinner. Did you say? I'm drinking dinner. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but it's it's lunchtime. No, it's not. It's, it's very late. <laughs> <laughs> it's very not lunchtime. It's very not lunchtime. So dinner from Main Beer Company, I think now is more regularly available than it used to be since they expanded. And I'm I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think it is. I had some friends that went up and they were able to buy a ton of it when, when they were there. So maybe they were just lucky. But anyways, I've been in love with Main Beer Company for, I don't know, the last five years or so. I've had their lunch. I've had their... Uh, a bunch of their other offerings that they lunch primarily. I've had lunch a lot. <laughs> Basically anytime I see it, I get lunch, <laughs> but like mean old Tom's good. And there's a few other ones that I'm blanking on right now, but tiny dinner was something. Yeah. There you go. Mo. And yeah. 
Mo, all those ones. So, but <laughs> but dinner, I have never been able to get my hands on, and I'm very excited for it right now. I, dinner, not to be confused with breakfast. Not to be confused with breakfast. And now they have like second dinner, which is like <laughs> apparently even better. I don't know. <laughs> so so now, they, they've at, gone down the entire Hobbit train. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so add that one to the list. But I was very excited uh, when this showed up on my front step, and I'm pretty pretty happy to have it in front of me. Uh, it's a nice, nice, um, like hazy, hazy. Yeah, nice, beautiful orange, dark orange color. Not too much head on it. Smells amazing. Who did you trade with? Oh, uh, some of our, me and Dana's friends, uh, Sarah and Evan. They they went up, they sent me some uh, Bissell Brothers, some main, uh, the dinner, a brewery that I hadn't heard of before, and uh, I think a, a local cider from Connecticut. So on the nose, though, I mean, it's just like a very like awesome smelling mango pineapple like those tropical fruits, stone fruit, stone fruit, star fruit. fruit, you know, all that stuff. Uh, but gravel fruit, no, yeah, just like really those those nice sweet tropical fruits. I would say these are approaching ripe uh, ripeness. I don't know if they're a hundred percent ripe. Like I don't know if they're, <laughs> I don't know if they're the freshest. No, uh, but you guys are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really excited to try this beer. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get on into it. Yeah, just as Chris is. Sipping on that beer it definitely looks like the beer I would go after. That like hazy type of beer I really like. Yeah, dinner is. I've had dinner once. It's really good. Um, usually they used to have to go up there and buy like a, a ticket and stand in line for like hours to get one case of it. So um, if it's more regularly available now, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that I'm not 100 percent certain on, but no, no, I'm taking it as gospel now. I heard it on the podcast. <laughs> uh, so this is uh phenomenal. It's really really amazing. I get. A ton of those, like, mango, orange, and pineapple, like, really, really strong. But then it kind of, like, kind of cuts over to, like, a nice bitterness, like, piney, earthy kind of bitterness. And, I mean, it's it's relatively light. I mean, it's it's higher in alcohol content, but it's not – it doesn't really taste like it's 8.2%. So <laughs> – but, I mean, it's just – it's a great beer. I'm – like it's it's really really awesome. It's really good. <laughs> so you get to cross off one of your one of your ultimate like white whales. I know, yeah. I, like I'm I'm sad that I'm gonna drink this on the podcast and it's gonna be gone and I won't have it anymore. But I mean, it's a beautiful beer, and I mean, I it's it's basic. It's like a beer that was tailor made for me because it's got everything I like. It's got like the. It's got the tropical fruit, the fruitiness, but then it also has the bitterness. Like, I like a relatively bitter finish, a relatively bitter beer. So, uh, I mean, this is, like, right up my alley. And I think, like, the fact that I've been hyping it up in my head for, like, a million years is <laughs> really helping me out right now. So, um, I'm going to give this a four and a half on Untapped because nice. it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, it's it's really hard for me to give anything like it takes a lot to give for me to give it a four seven five or a five now where I feel like I, we talked about it a million times but when we started Untapped I was giving fives to like pff, everything like oh man this beer doesn't suck give it a five <laughs> <laughs> Bud Light five well Coors Light Tud Tud legitimately gives Bud Light's fives <laughs> I did I I have given them a five before yeah <laughs> I, I think my first ever five on the app was Sip of Sunshine. <laughs> I, I definitely I used to give sip fives, heady topper fives, vocal banger fives, things like that. So, hmm. but I mean, personally, I feel like the timing of it plays into it as well because those beers were like revolutionary when they came out. Like they were the beginning of that style, that New England IPA style, and they really just said, "Okay, here we are," and yeah. we're amazing. No, I mean, that's... rock you like a hurricane. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Don't quit your day job, Doug. <laughs> no, but you're you're completely right. I mean, back when I rated a Heady Topper a five or whatever, it probably was one of the best beers available. Like, and it's still a damn good beer. I mean, it's not not bad by any means. But there's just they just they keep pushing the boundaries and they keep just blowing up and making amazing beers. So now I don't know if you said it, but how long did you were you hanging on to this beer for? Oh, I just got it Thursday. Oh, okay, but you had heard, you had known about it for quite a quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I I I'd, I'd like we visited Main Beer Company 
before we had CJ, so like September 2017, we went and did main beer company and stuff when Dana was, you know, eight, seven months pregnant, but whatever. You basically brought a DD with you. <laughs> no, six months pregnant, actually. Um, and it was, that was a lot of fun, but they didn't have dinner. So, you know, but now here it is just sitting right in front of me and I'm going to finish it tonight and I'm going to be sad again. But So you couldn't have dinner with dinner? I couldn't have dinner with dinner, no. But I did have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> with lunch? <laughs> Uh, or lunch no, dinner. I think it was actually like in the morning. I think it opened at like eleven when we were there. But <laughs> you had a lunch with so breakfast. You, you had lunch with breakfast. I had brunch. Okay, so boys, Dan, what's up, favorite, Ted? Your favorite segment. We're gonna do this today. Welcome to No Such Thing as a Stupid Question. Oh, I love this one. No stupid questions. No stupid questions. So here's the the, the first question of the day: Is can bugs get fat? Hmm. <laughs> um. Yes, yes, absolutely they can. Can they? Yeah. Ever seen a fat bug? Have you ever seen a tick on a dog? Ooh, that is a fat bug. There you go. Ooh. That's a good point. That is a that's a good answer. That is a good point. Have if you let a mosquito land on you and it just you just let it sit there. It gets bigger. It gets fatter, I would imagine. <laughs> so you what we what you're telling me now is we need to catch a bug and measure it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you want me to take my my camera outside? There's this spider that made this like condominium complex of a web that <laughs> spans like half the distance of our patio, and this is the fattest spiders I've ever seen. It's like its abdomen is like the size of my thumb, and as my friend described it, it looks like it's wearing camo. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fat. Spider. That's a, I mean, I guess you're right. Spiders do have do vary in sizes. They do, yeah. But you can't ask a spider like what they weigh because it's just that whole thing, you know. Like, they, oh yeah, they get very upset with they, that. They take offense to it. Like, does this web make me look fat? And you always say no, always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that yeah, no, that spider's a bad motherfucker. There, this, there was a spider on my shed that's like that. And I don't know, I don't know what kind of spider it is, but all I know is that I no longer have a shed. Like it's the that's the shed. The shed is the spiders now. So, <laughs> and as long as he leaves me alone, I won't kill it. And I'm also like, when you, it's it's like big enough where if I kill it, it would be like, you know. And I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with that. There's this like, there's this famous story from when when my parents bought my parents' house. It hadn't been lived in for over a year, so it was kind of infested with the spiders. And they took me to Disneyland when I was like four or five. This was like right after they bought the house. And my uncle always says, he's like, oh, there was this massive spider in the house. It was like as big as a flice water. And I hit it, and it just kept on running. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that's when you move. That's always fun. <laughs> yeah. You just... You you just turn around and walk out of the house. You're like, you know what? This <laughs> yep. is the spider's house now. That's either a rat or a big spider. <laughs> uh, Dan, I remember the time when your dad was building that wall down in back, and he found that big <laughs> spider, and he spray painted it blue, and it still was alive. So I think he, sp I think he covered it in like plastic. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what do you do when you don't have bug? Spray spider killer, you spray paint it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. At least now that, that was a very large spider. At least it makes it easier to see, so you can like keep out of its way. <laughs> <laughs> Just big blue creature. <laughs> big blue's coming. <laughs> Stay out of the way. Uh, that, that thing, it, that still might be living in your parents' backyard. Yeah, that thing's it's, decided it's, to take over. It's forever entombed in the concrete steps in the back. <laughs> it's like like a Han Solo version of the spider. <laughs> All right. So for the next question. How do I discreetly dispose of a pool noodle in a public area? <laughs> Wait, what? How do you secretly dispose of a pool noodle in a public area? Let's just say you're running from the cops, and for whatever reason, this pool noodle is the key witness to you getting arrested. <laughs> How do you get rid of this thing? Oh, okay. Uh... I mean, my first reaction to that question is, what possible scenario lands you with a pool noodle in public? Right, yeah. 
unless you're at like the public pool and then that makes sense you know yeah and then you just throw it in the public pool's garbage <laughs> and no one cares May, uh, you know what it is he probably was at the public pool and like some other kid like took the pool no- noodle from him so he wants to ruin the fun for everybody that's what it is this user said i put a big red pool noodle in my locker during freshman orientation because i thought it would be funny but now it's been two weeks and it's still there and i'm the only freshman with a locker and uh in this hall and it's all upperclassmen around me every day i don't understand why this person needs to throw away a noodle but he wants to get rid of it so how do we help out our friend here <laughs> you know it'd be a really cool gag if I put a pool noodle in my own locker <laughs> and then get self-conscious when I realize that no one wants to see a big pool noodle. I mean, I think the secret there is he just has to find a way to sneak it into somebody's health locker and then now it's their problem. That is true. That is, he needs to put it somewhere else. That is true. Yeah. I think he wants... Of all the lockers. What if he takes like a pair of scissors and like cuts like... One little like ring off, and then mm. stuck it sticks in his pocket, and then little by little he just you know disposes of it that way. So <laughs> every day he cuts a little bit off, cuts a little ring off, just a little ring, and then bloop! Oh, that's that little that little bit's gone. And like at, at the end of the school year, you won't have a little pool doodle anymore. I feel like there was a movie about the same exact concept. Do you guys remember about a impromptu trivia question? Mm. Dude, where's my car? No, <laughs> no. Taking something in little bits and pieces and disposing of it a little bit at a time over years and years and years. Shawshank. Oh, we're talking like Shawshank? Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, best, so this guy should Shawshank. He's got to Shawshank pool the pool noodle. noodle. Yes. <laughs> Going out. Cut the, <laughs> cut. Oh, there you go. Okay. So is this high school you're talking here? He's yeah, talking upperclassmen. So. This high school? Okay. So basically shred it into little, little bits. Put it in your pocket. And then every day... When you go to lunch, just drop a little bit of it out of your pockets. He's going to be known as the freshman who who walks around and shits red out of, out of his pocket. Yeah, just little bits at a time. No one will notice. That's the whole point. If you do like, you know, half a centimeter of pool noodle a day over the course of a school year, it's all gone. <laughs> I don't see what the big problem is. I remember pretty distinctly having like a, a, a board game and a... <laughs> and a frisbee in my locker for an entire school year. So <laughs> your locker was disgusting. It was. It wasn't disgusting. It was just had a lot of shit in it. It, was, it wasn't gross. It wasn't food. It was just. It was just full uh, and a mess. <laughs> Chris's eighth grade locker was like a glacier. It's like by the end of the school year, there was so much weight pushing down that the bottom material just melded together into <laughs> one brick of paper. I, I remember him at one point going to his locker and going, there's less stuff in here than there was yesterday. <laughs> like it, stuff started to just disappear. Like I think the, eco- it, the ecosystem in his locker just took it over. <laughs> Everyone looked forward to the end of the school year, not because we were graduating eighth grade, but to see Chris clean his locker. <laughs> it's the greatest event. I was I was LCS. voted mess, voted messiest locker that year. So yeah. I don't understand how you got away with that because like they used to do like locker inspections <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> did they? They never did mine. I don't think. I, I don't think that was a thing. Oh, okay. I thought they. I had all like the the little like magnetic football helmets that you could get at the grocery store. Oh, yeah. Like all of those separated by the individual divisions. <laughs> Chris, Chris had board games. I did. I had. I had. I, if you ever wanted to play Life, though, I think I had the hookup. So uh, <laughs> was it was it Life or was it Sorry? Oh, it was Sorry. It was Sorry. You're right. It was. Yeah. No. If you ever want to play the game of Sorry, I'm your guy. Or throw throw the disc around. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you just had to find it, risk your life to pull it out, and then <laughs> then you can play. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Easy. Easy. I think that this, going back to this question, I think that this freshman should just take the noodle out and just proceed to just hit people with it. I mean, man up, man. You brought the, you brought the noodle to school, start beating the shit out of people with it. Assert your dominance. There you go. I think, I think we got it. <laughs> He's clearly a listener of this podcast, so he knows exactly what to do now. So Correct. We've helped him out. This is where Chris splices in the legal disclaimer. Yeah, right. Right. Kind right like, now. Kind of like when we talked about Baby Flight Club and I was like, we yeah. do not condone the, 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 
the fighting of children. Well, no, no it's pitting ch- children against each other. You don't fight children. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I think, I know CJ won, but I think CJ's like a lock now. Like, I don't think there's anything. Like, CJ's, he's a beast, but. He, Chris, I don't know. Chris Jr. There's got to be somebody who can take him on. I don't know. He'd be he'd be a decent matchup against like Nate, and Nate's got like a, a year on him. Nate's four, two years on him. Nate, yeah, Nate <laughs> is. Uh, we were hanging out with them earlier at at Lindsay and Zephy's uh, baby shower. They mm. were actually in town for a couple days. Uh, Lindsay's due in November. Nate is scary articulate. Like for a four year old four year old child, it is very creepy how articulate this kid is. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, I love him to death. It's not a bad thing. It's a good he, thing. He might be able to. CJ might be able to like outmuscle him, but I think Nate would outwit CJ. <laughs> ah, probably. <laughs> CJ. CJ does not give a lot of. He. He's not a. Right now, he's very much a do and then think. Like, <laughs> like he's like you know it'd be fun going head first off this couch. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> but. He's not. He's, he hasn't quite thought the rationale through yet. Be like, hmm, maybe I could get down another way. He's just like, ah, uh, boom. <laughs> now, I, I always thought the male species it takes to like twenty six to grow out of that. No, I mean I don't know. This kid is this kid's insane. He's he's nuts. But how do how do I get off this couch? Head first seems to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then like he just he just does it, or he'll climb over the back. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't get it. The kid has so much energy. He's so funny. Well, so speaking of Nate, he lost a tooth that way. He jumped Ooh. off the couch and hit his face on the edge of the table. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, smashed his tooth, and he had to get it pulled. It was legit broken half. No, oh, I, I was going to say, that is right. He does have a tooth missing. He does. Mm. And he'll tell you why. If you ask him why he doesn't <laughs> have a tooth. I, huh, I jumped off the couch and hit it on the table. <laughs> Oof, that's rough. Uh, I think about doing that now, and I'm like, oh, man, that kid's, that kid's <laughs> braver than I am. <laughs> oh, man. But So, Dan, I want to ask you, because I know I've seen you do this before, but you're like, you're in, I know you, sure. do, a, you do a bunch of really cool things. Like, you're, you're basically a ninja in training, and then also, like, you do a Whoa. lot of, like, free climbing and stuff, right? Yes, free climbing, not to be confused with free soloing. Or but free yes, basing. Free, free climbing. I, free, I don't know. You climb know you climb tall stuff. things. That's <laughs> I don't I don't know the difference between them all, so but I know that you you, you climb tall things. Um Yeah. I, I I don't know. I loved climbing growing up. Um I mean you guys probably know I would just like climb trees all the time. Like mm-hmm. I would just always be climbing trees, always wanted to be like putting sketchy pieces of wood up in trees to make little platforms and climb up to them and and uh yeah not um you know not too long after i got into college i started like rock climbing in the gym and kind of fell in love with that and been doing it a lot more recently and started climbing outside recently which is kind of like a whole new universe of stuff all the gear and whole new world <laughs> yeah a new fantastic <laughs> point of view no one to tell. It's okay, snow. I don't think we can legally do any more. <laughs> Where to go? And tonight on Disney Songs with Friends. <laughs> um, That's a Patreon exclusive yeah. podcast. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've been rock climbing as, as much as I can. It's one of those things where it's it's kind of a whole day endeavor. So you know, bought all the gear. You know, hired a guide a few times to kind of teach me, sh- show me the ropes, quite literally. Um, so I can uh, you know do it safely and all that good stuff. But um, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's like it's a physically challenging sport, but at the same time you have the mental aspect of the risk involved is mentally challenging. And then the climbing itself is a, is like a puzzle. Like how do you navigate the, the cracks, edges, um, and, and holds of the route that you're climbing to get from the bottom to the top. So it's, you know, mentally challenging in two different Ugh. ways and, and physically challenging. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. Um, yeah. And a lot of people, a lot of people really confuse <clears throat> free climbing and free soloing. Free climbing simply means you're climbing rock with your hands and feet only, but you're 
you have a rope on to catch you if you fall, right? But the rope's not helping you climb. It's just there if you fall to save you. That's free climbing. Mm. Free soloing is free climbing without any rope for protection. Mm. Um, so if anybody has not yet seen the movie or the documentary Free Solo, um, you should. It's a it's a great film, even if you're not a climber. It's about a climber named Alex Honnold who free soloed El Capitan in Yosemite, which means he climbed. A, I thought there was a documentary about freeing Han Solo. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's funny because he did want to actually call the documentary Solo, but Solo, uh, the Han Solo movie, came out right about the same time, and so he wasn't able to call it that. So they called it Free Solo. But so that documentary is about uh, Alex Honnold free soloing El Capitan, 3,300 feet of climbing, hard climbing at that, harder climbing than I can climb mm. currently with no rope at all. Um that's a certain level of psychoness. That it's it's really interesting. Like if you watch it, you kind of like you know get a little glimpse into his world, and like it's 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 crazy. Um, but then on the side of that, there's the Dawn Wall, which is another climbing documentary that came out a little bit after Free Solo. That's of um, two climbers that climb another part of El Capitan, which is the hardest route on El Cap to climb. So they're climb they're free climbing it, but they have ropes for protection because it's the absolute hardest way to climb El Cap. They fall over and over and over again, um, it, and it takes them, you know, like six, seven, or eight years to piece this climb together to actually, uh, you know, get to a point where they can do one push from the bottom to the top. Um, and if my memory serves me correctly, I think it took them like seventeen or nineteen days. Uh, to get from the bottom to the top. Holy crap! Strictly free climbing the whole way. So when you um, when you just said that and you said it took them like seven or eight years, I like half envisioned them climbing a little bit and then like basically making a little settlement <laughs> and like living there for like a year. I live here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So on their on their final push, when they actually climbed from the bottom to the top, in um, I'm going to go with 17. I think it was 17 days. They um, they did. They set up like a base camp that they went back to every night to to sleep, basically. Sleep, cook food, and whatever. But they never actually came down um, until they made it all the way to the top. Wow. Um, that's, it's, that's pretty crazy. That is and, crazy. Um, I, yeah. I, I sent you a video. If I can, I'll, uh, I sent it on Facebook. So check it out when you can. But uh, I want you to, I want your thoughts on this stupid climb that one of my friends posted. And I was watching it. And this is going to prove to you that I'm never going to be a free climber or anything. <laughs> I mean, outside of the fact that I, all I do is work and drink beer. But, like, it, I was getting anxiety just, like, watching this thing. It was insane. But, um, it, I mean, it was it was cool. But I was like, man, I don't think I could do it. I, I know I couldn't do that. It's crazy. It's pretty. I think they were free climbing because they ha there's a lot of ropes and stuff. I don't think okay, I can helicopter I, I, I that. Got it. <laughs> so this would be considered like a traverse. Oh, okay. Like well, they're traversing along this crazy narrow ridge line. I traverse with a lot. Sheer, <laughs> sheer cliff on <laughs> on both the left and the right of them. Oh, and this guy's just straight up just standing up. It's he does have a rope on. He does. It's ridiculous though. And then, like, there's one point where he, like, looks back at, I assume, his girlfriend or fiancé or whatever, and she's just like, this is not fun. I do not want to do this. <laughs> Hell no. So There's actually a, there's a climb in Yosemite that I really want to do called Mathis Crest. And it essentially looks like, if you imagine the back of a stegosaurus, like, just sticking out of the ground, that's essentially what it looks like. Um, and, yeah, you kind of, like, climb up one end, traverse along the ridge, and then rappel down the other side. Cool. And um, hmm. you know, contrary to what videos look like, a lot of times it all depends. It's like it's kind of a crapshoot. It really depends on how they're rigging their stuff up. But if you do it right, it's actually quite safe. Mm. Um, all the gear is like you could hang F-350s off of this gear and it would hold. Mm. Challenge accepted. Yeah, you really can. There's there's videos of the actual drop test where they drop like these just big giant blocks of concrete on these little tiny, you know, climbing carabiners and stuff and it holds. 
Um, so it's designed for holding, um, you know, three, four, five thousand pounds. And uh, but yeah, that's really crazy. That's in Switzerland. That's super, super thin. The guy's literally straddling yeah. this thing. It's crazy, but yeah, I saw that. You should... I, I thought of you because I know you like <laughs> climbing and stuff. So <laughs> that's super cool. So, so oh you... yeah, I saw. I'm just at the part right now where he's taking a picture of his girlfriend. And she's like, hell no. This is stupid. Why am I up here? <laughs> this uh, Tinder this date is, went oh too man, far. The view is insane. So in addition to yeah. climbing rocks, you are also a ninja. Yes. How? Not of <laughs> not of the shadowy night kill people variety. All right. In that case, move on. It's fine. Yeah. I was going to ask, how does... <laughs> How goes your training with the with the ninja stars? Like, are you accurate yet? Can you kill somebody from <laughs> twenty feet away? Yeah, I can slice a juggler from about a hundred yards. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm working on two hundred yards. No, yeah. So I'm like, I'm right about at my three year mark of uh, getting into the whole like American Ninja Warrior thing. When do you get your whole like outfit that's all black and you get to jump out of trees and stuff like Shinobi? <laughs> yeah. You know, the problem with me is if, if anybody's watched the TV show, it's, it's a family show. It's a kid mm -hmm. show. It's all about interesting people and all these stories and stuff. It's really not about who's really good, who's athletic. There's, there's plenty of that to go around. So in order to make the TV show exciting, um, and relatable to everybody, they have to put on tons of different walks of life and, uh, you know, comeback stories. Right. And uh, to be honest, I don't have one of those. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I'm a I'm a white middle aged male, graduated from college, raised by both parents in a you know middle to upper middle class <laughs> American neighborhood. You, you really like, you really made a name for yourself. You really made it happen. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really kind of have that backstory. Right. Um but you know what? It's, it's just such a fun sport. You know, you have, it's a great community of people and it's, I, I boil it down to this. Everything that as a kid you want to do on your middle school playground and the teachers tell you, no, get down. You essentially get to do that and to the 10th power in, in the ninja gym. So it is everything you would ever want to do as a child, but you can do it safely and get good at it too. Um, so it's just a lot of fun. It's functional fitness. I, I always had a really hard time just going to a gym and doing a workout. Like I, I have a really hard time being motivated like that. And um, I'm, I'm going to throw a huge shout out right now to, to Tud and Caitlin because they took me to one of their fitness classes at their Melt gym mm -hmm. up in Glastonbury. And man, like, you know, it's it was hard. Hashtag Tud Fit. Like, Yes, hashtag, tud, hashtag fit. tud fit, man. I was, I was impressed. I'm not gonna lie. I was very impressed. It was a very hard workout, and um, but yeah. So I don't know. I just kind of got addicted to it, that and the rock climbing, and I try to do it as much as I can. We're kind of right in the thick of the National Ninja League season, so when the TV show ends, there's like an international league that starts up, and there's competitions like every weekend so i'm pretty much doing a competition every weekend or every other weekend yeah i think i saw you just did one not that like last weekend or yesterday or something yeah so i did a an, an nnl competition last weekend and then last night actually yeah. i did a it was kind of a one-off competition it wasn't associated with the league but it was a new gym that a friend of mine um moved up to albany new york and he's now a manager at this new ninja gym. And so they hosted a decathlon, which to my knowledge was the first event of its type, which you could imagine there were 10 events and you competed individually in each, each of the events. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was a cool format. Um, a lot different than the traditional competition where it's just a course and you just, you get one chance and if you fall, you're done. Mm. Um, where the decathlon was more just kind of like, do all the 10 events as many times as you want and your best score, best time or whatever prevails and, and whoever does the best overall wins. Um, it was a lot of fun. Nice. It was, uh, yeah, it was very cool. Um, so I enjoy it, you know, keeps me busy. It's kind of my solution to uh, staying fit while also working a desk job and, you know, driving 35,000 miles a year. So 
keeps me keeps me active, keeps me going. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. But I think it's that time of the episode where we shift gears and we go to everybody's favorite segment, our three handles on our Frosty Mug of Wisdom. Mm, so, the Frosty Mug. The frosty Mug. Si, senor. So, uh, anybody got a good one that they want to start off with? or I I feel like I do. Oh, Dan, okay. Dan's got one. Okay. <laughs> As we all know, guests, guests go first. That's a new thing, right? Yeah. I'm... I told you guys about this when when we were, did our last episode before Tud's wedding. Um, this is one of those as seen on TV items, the drop stop. Um, this is a great item too for your Amazon affiliate link. Okay. So the drop stop is the car seat gap filler. Ah. It was the people that have invented this were on Shark Tank, and it's literally this little like foam thing that you just stick in the gap between your seat and your center console. Now, not all cars have that gap, but I'm sure many of the dozens of listeners know <laughs> that when you have that gap uh, whoa, whoa. and you're Hundreds late for work... Listeners. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're late for work. Your millions cell phone and always finds that gap. Yeah. So when you're late for work, your cell phone always finds that gap. Slides out of your pocket... Goes mm. down beneath your seat in that little crevice where you gotta just like shove your hand down there and you can never quite get it. So it's just a super simple little like neoprene foam thing that slides over your seatbelt buckle and fills the gap. And I honestly can't tell you how many times I've like dropped a quarter and it's like landed perfectly on the drop stop and I'm just like, damn it, that thing's awesome. Just. Every time you do that, you basically take 25 cents off the price, you know, and then it 100%. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's 19.99 on Amazon Prime. And I did kind of hold out for a while. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, 19.99 for these two stupid pieces of foam. Um, but I finally caved after dropping my phone in the gap like twice in the same day. <laughs> and I don't, I don't regret it at all. Like it is, it is awesome. Every car that has that gap should have. The drop stop. Now, I gotta say, I've never had this issue with my car. So, maybe I just don't have that gap. I have. I mean, maybe not. You would know if you have that gap. Uh, most cars do have it, but I've seen a couple cars that don't have it. So. I mean, I definitely have dropped my phone down there. And me and Dan drive, I mean, essentially the same car. So, it makes sense. Um, yeah, but yeah. Toyota Prius. Yeah, that's right. FTW. That's right. And, uh, but I've definitely dropped my phone down there. Not only that, but I'm thinking about like all the French fries that you drop down there. See, it's like, you know, you just, it's like a uh, little French fry holder. <laughs> Every time you drop That's a French so fry. funny. <laughs> all right, Chris, you have to go on Amazon right now and look at the photograph on Amazon. Is it, is it a bunch of French fries? There's French, there's French fries on it. <laughs> <laughs> this was not planned. I'm going to have a right now. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> the drop stop. There's literally, like, all right, go to the fourth photo. It says, no more fallen fries down the Carmuda Triangle. <laughs> 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 yep and it's like it's well and I, I i assume this is what it was going to be but basically someone's just like i don't know who eats fries in the car like this but they're just like it's like the fries are laying on the center console and they're just like going all willy-nilly like who does that oh yeah that, oh, that super size mcdonald fry just casually just laying sideways oh man uh so but yeah drop stop um i assume the the link will be posted in the show notes oh yes it will Hundred percent. So I'm gonna hand uh, this nice frosty mug over to my good friend Tudley. Yep. So my uh, handle this week is going to be an app to to access Reddit from your phone. I don't like the the actual official Reddit app, so I've been using this app called Apollo. Um, I just feel like it's a more user friendly app to access Reddit. You're able to sign in with multiple different accounts if you have them. Um, and you can you can make create a uh, multi like multi reddits so you can like group a whole bunch of subreddits and together uh pretty easily unlike on the normal reddit app um just an overall better user experience the app is called apollo uh i think it's 3.99 for the pro version but you can also try the free version at no cost to you or at no cost at all nice that's awesome yeah very cool apollo I, see i think and it's only recently i've gotten into reddit i for some reason missed the reddit train 
I don't know why, but um, now I read it and I give thumbs up. And then someone gave me a thumbs down and I was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Don't give me thumbs down on Reddit. Yeah, I'm for sure the same way. I, I miss the Reddit train completely. Yeah. I don't really look at it at all. Um, but I did once. I went down the like personal finance Reddit. And it's just like a bunch of random people giving each other personal finance advice, and it drove me crazy. Did you give? So I'm like, up? I really should. Oh, it was so bad. I'm like, I will like waste so much of my life reading these comments. Yeah, the internet is good for comments, I guess. Dan was the one who gave you the downvote, Chris. No, <laughs> don't ever downvote me. I just, tr- I just, I just troll you guys in my just spare downvote. time. <laughs> oh man. So I guess I get to I get to fill up the mug, right? I finish the mug this week. You are the official finisher of the mug. Finisher of the mug. Okay. So I know you both know who Pat McAfee is. Yes. Yeah. The ex Colts punter from a few years back. You know, he was our punter for like mm-hmm. I don't know seven or eight years, something like that. He and he was really good, but he retired. Well, he took his talents, I guess, uh, to YouTube and podcasting and uh, stand up comedy and things of that nature. So. I'm going to put over his podcast, which is the Pat McAfee Show hmm. 2.0. Uh, I, I've been watching it on YouTube, and they break it up into like small chunks, so you can watch like little 8 to 15 minute videos. And some of the stories are really, really funny. And he, in general, is just, he's a very, very funny individual. So, um, especially if you like football, and if you like the Colts, it helps too, because he does talk about the Colts a lot. But, you know. But he also talks about the bad side of the Colts, like, you know, so it's like you get a really good in-depth look at the locker room and things like that. So it's 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 very entertaining. I really enjoy it. It's a good time waster, I guess, if you're looking for something to just put on in the background and listen to while you're doing reports for work or something. I would know from experience, but it's uh, it's good. It's it's a lot of fun. So check him out. His stand up's funny, too. But it's the Pat McAfee show 2.0. Yep, that's it. OK. Yeah. Yep. Just found it and just hit subscribe. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. 109 episodes. That's pretty impressive already. Yeah. And and it's like I said, he talks about football and not just like not just the Colts, but you know, he he does give some insight as to like why he retired and like how things ran. Like basically, and you could kind of just a little snippet was like they were talking about how like Peyton Manning was essentially like the god of of Indiana essentially. So if anybody, if Peyton Manning wanted anybody off the team, not that he would, but he could just be like, I don't want him here and they would get rid of him. So it was, and it's just like kind of weird to hear that oh, dynamic yeah. from another player. So I don't know. Pretty cool. It, it's, it was, it's very entertaining. He's very funny. I think he's hysterical. Yeah, that's really cool. You guys mentioned pulling back the curtain a lot. And I think as far as the NFL is concerned, it's super interesting to, see the curtain pulled back because as as huge fans we like to think we know what's going on but we really don't no we, no. we call it we call it parting the kimono <laughs> <laughs> and so with that we'd like to thank the breweries today who provided today's beer i'm going to go first with thanking fox farm for their noetic american pale ale i'd like to thank main beer company for dinner and i'm going to thank samuel adams for their cosmic mother funk grand crew 2015 limited release. Please go on all social media. That's Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram and Untapped, and follow us at DAWF Podcast. Hashtag follow the email at DAWF Podcast at gmail.com. Um, I did see a few different emails that came in this week, so thank you to those who sent emails. I uh, continue to send those in. Um, over at loves to read your general thoughts, so make sure that that happens. Please go on iTunes and give us a five star rating. Obviously, it helps people find us. If we get uh, better ratings, make sure you leave a comment when you do that, too. That way people know how awesome we are when they're reading your comments to us. Uh, make sure you're clicking on our Amazon affiliate link. We're going to have that. Uh, we're going to have the drop stop there posted from this week's episode. Um, so just make sure you go on there, click that. And, you know, and while you're there, make sure you buy some really expensive items. <laughs> you know, and in today's, uh, you know, in this episode's most expensive item on Amazon list is going to be a uh, 30 pounds of Himalaya natural goji berries for three hundred and twenty-seven dollars and twenty cents. <laughs> These goji berries have all kinds of reported health benefits, and people are willing to pay quite a bit to try it out. Buy thirty pounds of these berries, um, and make sure that you're you know saving them up to eat them whenever you'd like to eat a goji berry. So make sure you guys are going on Amazon and buying that right now. You know, just just chilling out, eating some goji berries, no big deal. Correct. Yeah, it's pr- pretty cheap. 
<laughs> we were looking for goji berries earlier today at Stop and Shop. Couldn't find any. Well, so now that I know, we're buying them off Amazon. Yeah, well, you can buy 30 pounds of them. We'll set you up with an affiliate link. They're basically free. Yeah, pretty much. Basically. Other than that, you know, that's it. Uh, do you guys have anything else to add before we fade off into into oblivion? No, I just want to thank you guys for um, having me on again. It's a lot of fun. It's always great chatting with you guys. Um, you know, a little bummed out. Brendan couldn't be with us, but um, I was thinking it would be cool because Brendan's with Ben right now. And with Brendan and Ben, that would be the five mm. Lisbon, Connecticut, Ross Hill Road friends all together in one Skype chat at the same time. The universe... May explode. That'll have to happen, I guess, at one point. I mean, it will. It's going to be a thing. But no, thanks for jumping in. I know it was, I texted you like, I don't know, four hours ago. I was like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> so, no, appreciate it. I have yes ready to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, he just always typed in, just like, oh, Chris is going to ask me one of these days. Yeah, no, appreciate you jumping on. And, you know, some, I know there's fun stuff coming up that we'll talk about on a future episode um, coming out from you. Yeah, sounds good. It was a good time. Appreciate it, guys. Perfect. And so with that, my name is Todd. My name's Chris. And I'm Dan. And remember, if you're drinking alone, do it with friends. All right. Perfect. Woo! Woo! So let me ask, when Tina gets home, does she just automatically start jackhammering concrete or something? Like, <laughs> I just assume she's having like... Yeah, what, what is that noise? <laughs> no, uh... <laughs>